call. We are going to share the same. After the other presenter. Yes, yes, I'm going to be with them. Um, Podemos começar? Rui, por favor, sit here. Good morning and welcome to the second interregional thematic workshop here in, in Lisbon on cooperation between the local public authorities, business sector, universities and R&D centers. It's a pleasure for me to participate in this international meeting and meet all the partners of the Speed Up project. I want to thank the hosting partner, the Camera Municipal de Lisboa, and in particular the Speed Up team which arranged this event. As you know, I am the deputy major for the economic development only since last February, but soon I was interested and actively involved by my team in the main local actions related with this project, with the project objectives, and in cooperation with the project stakeholders. Today, in the delegation from Florence, we have one of our stakeholders, Miss Marika Macchi, who represents the Economics Department of the University of Florence, which is working with the municipality to create a map of the innovation ecosystem. As the topic of this event suggests, we think that the research sector is one of the main actors of this ecosystem. From our region, we will also have another guest arriving here tomorrow, the director of the productive activity sector of the Tuscany region, Mr. Albino Caporale. We all know, in fact, the importance for the interregional projects to impact on and improve the implementation of the regional policy instruments. That's why we are creating a close relationship with the main authority for the structural funds programs dedicated to support entrepreneurship. The municipality of Florence is trying to support startups located in the most distressed areas of the city by reducing the taxes. But cooperation in this field doesn't reflect only the economic aspect. We are trying as well to build a solid dialogue with the direct beneficiaries of these funds and services. For this purpose, thanks to the involvement of experts in this field, of particip participatory processes, we are organizing a participative event taking place in Florence next autumn. We will try to match their real needs and suggestions with the services offered by private and public providers in terms of funds, training, information, consultancies, in order to let the resources and services more efficient. Finally, as many of you already know, I was really proud that the second of the main good practices selected by the German partner were from Florence and Tuscany. But at the same time, I was really interested in the other selected practice from uh, Tallinn, Andalusian, and Enterprep because I found common objects and innovation solutions. 
So I want to thank the entire partnership, which is Activity, cooperating to exchange experience and improve network. Today and tomorrow, we have the opportunity to participate in this training section together with our respective stakeholders that I thank for the interest in our project. The presentation will show a successful partnership between the private and public sector and will highlight the benefits of this partnership. <coughs> they refer to different experience related to four teams. Today, the first two teams will be ecosystem mapping methodology, the urban evolution and integration, open source for entrepreneurial knowledge. Tomorrow, we will have the second two, which are startup and idea competitions, and how to improve the partnership between private and public sector. And tomorrow afternoon, we will have the opportunity to participate in three interesting study visits at Startup Lisboa, Espaso Enter, and Second Home. Very good. With this event, we will finalize the second topic and we will deliver the second assessment document dedicated to selected good practice. A very important document to be improved, thanks also to the forthcoming activity of Police Learning Platform System. The municipality of Florence is proud to lead such an ambitious project at its very qualified consortium. I would like to thank you, all of you again, and in particular, our local partner for the work will come in Portugal. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning to all. Um, thank you so much for your kind words, of course. Um, and um, this project speed up um, and the way that was explained is really important for us. Mm -hmm because it, it touches one of the most important things that we have been trying to do in Lisbon. And I believe that every city in Europe is trying to do more or less the same thing, which is work with different kinds of stakeholders to develop programs and politics and policies to stimulate entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, job creation. And this is exactly what we are trying to do. And um, it's really a, a pleasure not only to welcome you to Lisbon, of course, but also to show a little bit what we are trying to do in Lisbon, but most importantly, to learn from you and from the other cities, um, an exchange of experiences. Because sometimes um, you believe that you don't, you, it's impossible to do certain things, but then you l look at specific cities or projects and you find a solution or you find a better way of doing so. This is really important for us. And the four um, areas and the four uh, themes that were chosen for these uh, two days, clearly I think it will be important for all of us. Um, my role here to, to open this session also is to introduce a person that will host most of the works um, and it's really a pleasure for me to introduce Rui Quinta. Rui Quinta is one of the most experienced person that we have in Lisbon working in innovation, design thinking, strategic design. Um, he had a really a critical role in the project I'm going to show in a little bit, which is made of Lisboa. Um, and I believe that we could not choose a, a better person to, to federate and to make the animation and of, of, all this se of all these sessions. I'm not sure if um, is it now that I should introduce Rui, but I believe not. I think we have time to... To, to, to present Rui, Rui, Rui Quinta. Um, but I, I would like to start, um, I think it will, the best way to, for me to show what we are trying to do in Lisbon is to make a short presentation and, and open this first section uh, that I'm going to make a presentation of a specific project which is called Made of Lisboa. Um, and then we have uh, Marika Maki for um, also the same theme but with another approach. So, um, if you don't mind, I will start my presentation sure. without any delays. Um, I'm going to make my presentation standing because it's impossible for me to, to talk. <laughs> so, um, um, so, maybe you can. Just I can sit there. Yeah? Yes, because yeah. otherwise you can. Sure. Sit. Okay, so. I'm, I'm going to make a short presentation that, that will be dividing into, into parts. So. 
the main focus of the presentation, it's the topic that gives the name of this first session, which is uh, ecosystem map methodology. Um, but I really want to share with you how a very specific project of the mapping of the ecosystem of Lisbon, of the entrepreneurial ecosystem of Lisbon, as a, as a role and a specific position in our broader strategy around economy, innovation, entrepreneurship, knowledge, uh, and specific sector that we are trying to foster in Lisbon. So I will divide this presentation in the first part that I will show you in a very panoramic way what we are trying to do in Lisbon regarding the broader strategy of economy, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And then I will focus on a specific project which is called Made of Lisboa. And I was talking to Rui, and maybe Rui can help me a little bit more, or even later to share with you some of the small details of the project, because he was one of the key persons in charge of the design of the project and the implementation with the city council and other partners. So, uh, first of all, I'm the General Director for Economy and Innovation. Um, this General Directorate, or Municipal Directorate, that was created in 2011. In 2011, or before 2011, the City Council didn't have uh, any structure inside the municipality to work around these areas of economy, innovation, entrepreneurship, uh, uh, knowledge, uh, the relationship with a, with a with universities and research centers. So it was in 2011 that for the first part in Portugal and in Lisbon, that was created something inside the structure of the municipality to work around this space, these areas. And it was a really important step um, for what happened um, for the past six years. When we, when we created uh, this General Directory for Economy Innovation, or the former mayor, which is our prime minister now, Mr. Antonio Costa, um, we started with a, what kind of a vision, what kind of a strategy do we want for the city of Lisbon regarding economy and innovation? And um, at that time, Portugal was uh, going through a major financial and economic crisis. Not just Portugal, but Portugal in, in particular, we are suffering really badly because of the, of the crisis. And the city and Portugal was the last place for an investor or a big company to, to look at, to invest in the future. So it was in a very turbulent and difficult times that this strategy was created and this structure was created. So the question was, uh, what should be our strategy? What should be our ambition in these very difficult and turbulent times? When you look at Lisbon, or when you think about Lisbon today, um, you think about a city that is amazing, beautiful, uh, is uh, really strong on the tourism side. You have so many visitors, or we have so many visitors. And this was happening for the past 10, 15 years. During the crisis, the tourism industry was really important for us. But these kind of things, or this kind of news, okay, the, the cover of Wire magazine, you have Europe hosted startup uh, cities, and it was Lisbon there. Or um, in these BBC uh, headlines, Lisbon is the best place to, not just to play, but also to work. Or, um, in Italian, Ooh. or we are the, the new we are the new Silicon Valley, or we are the new Berlin, or whatever. There is there there, there is a, something that was uh, growing, and uh, Lisbon was uh, becoming an attraction and a magnet, not just for the visitors, for different kind of people, investors, companies, startups, creative people. This was something that was changing for the past six, seven years in Lisbon. Well, you can explain this by saying this is just a miracle, it just happened. Uh, but that's not our case. Um, and of course now, we, in 2015, we were awarded with this really important award. For us, the Committee of the Regions awarded the city of Lisbon. was the first city to get this award that was more for regions in the past. It was the European Entrepreneurial Region in 2015. But how and how can we explain this? 
uh, regarding the economic policies, innovation policies and policies for entrepreneurship. This is what I'm trying to explain in five minutes. So, and of course we have Web Summit, which is our the flagship project, worldwide flagship projects on the innovation and, and web and um, uh, mobile also. So it's a massive event. It's going to happen in the November for the second time in Lisbon. 60,000 people, so the world will be watching Lisbon. So regarding branding and the promotion of the city as a place for innovation and web uh, entrepreneurship, Web Summit is clearly something really important for us. Not just for Lisbon, also for Portugal. So this is the statement that we start to communicate to the world in 2011. And it's exactly the same statement, exactly the same vision from 2011 uh, until today. So in, and in 2011, uh, it was not clear what will happen to Portugal, to Lisbon. We are in a very difficult situation, position, but we started to have this uh, idea that we should be really ambitious. So the ambition was key for us. When we started something that in many other cities was something that was already happening. Economy innovation, traction of investment, attraction of companies, attraction of talents. That was something that was for 20 years in many cities, 25. We were starting and we start with this really clear ambition to be, to, to, to be a place in the world and not just a very interesting city in Portugal or in Iberia or whatever. So we started with this clear, um, strong ambition. But how can we transform this vision in reality that was something really important for cities and for people that want to have a, an impact on the life of the citizens? Uh, uh, we started this with uh, four major, what we call engine of growth. In each one of these engines areas, we have several projects. So I will just explain the main areas, the main engines, and then focus on a specific one, which is the, the Lisbon as a startup city. And in Lisbon as a startup start city, I will focus on a specific project that is the mapping project. That is not just a mapping project, it's made of Lisboa. So the first engine was, it's really important for us to attract new players, new investments, new companies, big companies, multinational companies projects, structural projects, and talents. So we work here with our in investment agency, which is Invest Lisboa, which is a partnership between the City Council and the Chamber of Commerce of the City of Lisbon. And we just try to give them much more power. And nowadays, Invest Lisboa is the entity that is responsible to promote the City of Lisbon for big investments, for attraction of companies, and talents. So they are in all the major fairs in different areas that can make a difference in this kind of activities. And we have several projects in that space. The second engine is what could we start doing around entrepreneurship? Uh, and we started in 2011. In 2011 we started with a real simple thing was how can we create stimulate and federate what we call today entrepreneurial ecosystem. And this is the story that I'm going to, to tell you. The story of the building and the growth of our entrepreneurial ecosystem and the role of a very specific project which is made of Lisboa. Okay? In, 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 the, in that second engine, we have many different kind of projects. So we have Startup Lisboa, which is our flagship project for entrepreneurship nowadays, which is an incubator space. In reality, it's like three spaces for incubation and the residence for entrepreneurship and Startup Lisboa will be the entity that will going to manage a massive project that we are going to, to implement in the next uh, few years. It's called Hub Creative of Beato, Creative Hub of Beato, which is in another part of the city, more industrial part. It will be like 40,000 square meters for entrepreneurship, innovation, creative industries. And, may, uh, start, uh, and Startup Lisboa will be the entity that is going to manage that project. Startup Lisboa is a partnership between city council uh, and different kind of entities, public and private, okay? And then we have programs for small businesses, microcredit. We have projects for young uh, uh, students in schools from the primary education to the secondary education for entrepreneurship. We are working around coding projects also. Um, we have many different kind of things happening in that space. Okay, but I will focus on how can a city or how 
we have developed an entrepreneurial ecosystem. Okay? This area is really important for us and is how can we bring universities and research centers to this strategy? How can we work with them? And we have different kind of projects with them, some accelerating programs, some uh, incubators themselves that we are partners with universities and many other things. But we start with something that is not clearly related with entrepreneurship, but it's really important for a city like Lisbon. We started to attract students and in the next stage, researchers. And we created with all the universities and different kind of partners, stakeholders, different stakeholders, a project that we call Study in Lisbon. And, for example, we have a, a, a digital platform and we have a lounge, a physical space, where an international student, when arrived to the city of Lisbon, can just solve all the problems regarding the bureaucracy, red tape, and also we have the foreign services, uh, the frontiers and foreign services with, in, in our own space. And then we have what will be the clusters, the sectors of our economy in the future. You, when you think about Lisbon, you think about tourism industry, the commerce, financial services, business services, which, because we are a capital city, but we started working around what will be the future industries for our economy, what will be the cl strategic clusters. We start with four, creative industries, health, life sciences, the sea and the river, the sea economy, the blue economy, and then everything that relates with digital. And then we add smart cities, resilience, and specific project that we are developing now, like robotics and a strategy to open the city to experimentation of new projects, new solutions. Startup just experimenting new stuff, new solutions, new technology, which has opened the city. We have a project that's called Smart Open Lisboa, in which we have like 20 startups experimenting different kinds of things, like chatbots with the city council when we want to respond automatically to our Facebook messages, but uh, in this square, we had like different kind of uh, startups or, and we have different kind of startups censoring and making crowd management projects or making sensor for noise. So we have just opened the city to, to startups. So this is more or less the broad strategy that we are developing. So what is the relevance of having like a mapping in a very straightforward and very simple way, uh, an ecosystem mapping project that we call Made of Lisboa? Well, it's not just a mapping uh, that you will see. So I will skip this. So to understand what is made of Lisboa, you need to understand what was the history and the evolution of our ecosystem and how we as a city and the city council designed a strategy and built this uh, evolution throughout the, the years. Well, in 2011, the city of Lisbon had like uh, a couple of incubators, a very limited number of incubators. Uh, and it was in, in 2012 that Startups Lisboa was created. I think you are going to visit Startups Lisboa. It's really close to this place. It's in the downtown of the city. It was a project that was born from the participatory budget of the city of Lisbon. So it was one million euros project that was voted by the citizen of the city and won one of the projects of the participatory budget of the city in 2010 uh, with different kind of uh, partners. And it's our flagship project for entrepreneurship. It's an amazing project for the past six years, uh, five years. Uh, but in 2011 and 2012, in Lisbon, our ecosystem was not so dense. And the question for the city council that was trying to design and implement a strategy towards entrepreneurship was, should we implement a strategy based on one incubator? How can we solve this question that we have a flagship project, we want to create an incubator that is like a, um, a reference, but that is really limited if you want to, to create a federation a networking of stakeholders around entrepreneurship. So we started something beyond the Startup Lisboa project, and we started to connect the incubators that already existed. Incubators that we were the main promoters, and incubators in which we were partners, and incubators that didn't have nothing to do with the city council or any partner. And we created a project that we have called 
the Lisbon Incubators Network. And it was just amazing in 2012. It was amazing because we connected six incubators. Six incubators. And it was clear, and it was the beginning of a, a sense of belonging from the different kind of stakeholders. And we start with the incubators because incubators are the most structured and stable stakeholders in this very turbulent and dynamic ecosystem that we call entrepreneurship ecosystem. So we start with six incubators. Now, let me just jump to the current times. We had this project that we called Lisbon Incubators Network with six incubators and some project that we owned and we promoted. And of course, Startup Lisboa was a uh, one of the first ones, and the most important one, for the city council. Not necessarily for the city, but for the city council. Um, and these are some of the numbers of the Startup Lisboa. I'm not taking too long because you are going to visit Startup Lisboa. Okay? Some of the numbers of Startup Lisboa, it's an ama am amazing project. Dynamic. It was a project that was born from the participatory budget. It is located in the downtown of the city by the decision of a former mayor. It's not the usual, not so obvious decision. We don't have any place to park. You don't have any universities here. You don't have any research labs or faculties. Uh, you didn't have any, any, any founders or entrepreneurs. In, you have like visitors and tourists. Things just completely change. And today, the downtown of the city and these neighborhoods are one of the most attractive places for creative people, for founders, for entrepreneurs, for location, different kind of co-working spaces and, and incubators and accelerating programs. But these are the numbers of the, of the startup Lisboa. Now, we don't have just six incubators. And we have like 15 incubators. Startup Bishbo itself has three incubation space, and I was telling you, they are going to manage a massive project, a big project, it's called Creative Hub of Beato. So this is the first layer of our ecosystem. And it was the first effort to start mapping. And the power of mapping is not just to make a nice slide or a nice picture. So the first layer was, okay, let's connect the incubators. And the incubators throughout the years were growing and growing, of course, as in many other cities. And nowadays, you have incubators for specific areas, for agro-business, for more for digital, or for web and mobile, or more for different kind of areas, bigger, smaller ones, okay? The second layer, which is clearly outdated in the picture that I'm going to show you, was beyond the incubators, we need to federate and connect the old accelerating programs that exist in the city. And we have more, tw more than 20 accelerating programs. Some of those programs and accelerating programs are big international ones. In some of those, the city council is one of the key partners. Lisbon Challenge, Building Global Innovators, for example, or Smart Open Lisboa. So uh, accelerating programs that are more or less horizontal, so it's not vertical, it's not for a specific industry, and it has like this international position, okay? We want to attract projects and startups and teams to come to Lisbon to accelerate their own startups and businesses, okay? And we have more than 20 accelerating programs. Some of them are smaller, some of them are very for sports or for IoT or for fintech or for insurance sectors or for uh, uh, smart cities. But somehow we try to federate not only the f accelerating programs and incubators in which we have the promoters or the key partners, but everyone, okay? The third layer were the co-working spaces. We include co-working spaces in this approach to the entrepreneurial ecosystem. We have more than 50 co-working spaces. Every week there is another co-working space uh, popping up in the city. Of course, small ones, bigger ones. We have Second Home, which is a very uh, high, um, high visibility co-working space that exists in London and in Lisbon. But we have Court Lisboa, which is the first co-working space in the city of Lisbon in one of the most uh, interesting territories in our city, which is LX Factory. It's a former industrial facility that is clearly one of the hotspots for creative industries. So more than 50 co-working spaces. And then uh, uh, it was clear for us that uh, uh, an ecosystem on entrepreneurship should also include the new trends around makers, urban manufacturing, 
fab labs, this idea that the city is a place for 3D printing, urban manufacturing, building things that usually 20 years ago were only able to make on factories outside in big places or in big factories. Mm -hmm. We have six, seven maker spaces, including a project that belongs to the city council, which is the Fab Lab Lisboa. I think we have someone from Fab Lab Lisboa around here. Uh, the manager from Fab Lab Lisboa, okay, is over there. You can talk with him. And the Fab Lab Lisboa is a project from the municipality, and it was created, and it was located in a former municipal market. But also, we have a crea an incubator for creative industries, the city council itself. So we have projects that we are the promoters and many others which are the federating. So the mapping and this platform is clearly important for federating different kinds of stakeholders. And of course, we need to include here the investors, business angels, VCs, really important for the city. Although when a, when a startup reaches like a 30 million investment round, we don't have that kind of amount of money in our own investors. So clearly it's important to have like bridges and avenues with most of the most important financial centers in Europe and in the world. This is something that most of these stakeholders can do nowadays. And then we have, of course, creative hubs not just creative uh, incubators, but something, places that exist in city and many other cities that are the hotspots for creative industries, for creative people, okay? And we included these in our mindset when we start designing this uh, uh, ecosystem, this entrepreneurial ecosystem. And then there is something really out of the, out of the box, which is like a residence for foreign entrepreneurs that is managed by Startup Lisboa. So this was, this is the, uh, the backbone, the structure, the backbone of our entrepreneurial ecosystem. And then when we start seeing the evolution, we start having, how much time? Five minutes, okay. So we had like a problem of identity and a problem to how can we explain and use all of these as a policy, as a platform for not just showing these to the world and attracting new players and founders and entrepreneurs, but also to design strategies, programs on the top of this fertile soil that is this amazing ecosystem. And remember that we have what we have called the Lisbon Incubators Network. And this is not a, an incubators network. This is clearly a very organic, a very dynamic, a very diverse ecosystem, reality. So we, st we, we, we start thinking, how can we transform something that don't respect and it's not really true to what is happening in a, in a project, in something that can make a difference. So we start thinking about, we need to create a brand and we need to create a platform that clearly show and can be useful to everybody that wants to create a new business or want to know more about our ecosystem. And this is when we start thinking about a new project that was becoming, that became Made of Lisboa. So Made of Lisboa was something that it's not, it was, not something that we just came out out of the blue without any kind of uh, a past. No, no, it was the, the, the it was the natural evolution of a, of a strategy. And but made of Lisboa was a, a something really innovative. It was a, a co-creative. Who can just give some 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 information more more, more information about the, the the technology or the the process, the methodology? But it was like applying design thinking or co-creative process and methodologies, not to a company or to design a brand of a company, but to an entire city and to an ecosystem. So we worked through six months with all the community, with all the stakeholders, not just to create the brand, but most importantly, to create the identity. What was that was important for the community? What were the, what, what were the functions the, the activities, the, the, the tools, the information that was important to have in this platform. So it was this kind of a process that gave birth to this website, <coughs> which it's called 
made of Lisboa. And I was showing you the image of the backbone of the ecosystem, but there are at least two things that are missing there in that picture that I was showing you. We didn't have the companies, startups, and we didn't have the people because it was almost impossible to put all that different kind of uh, um, uh, items in a map. So the map was not uh, possible as a response to the diver diversity and density. So we created a platform in which there was a map, but also many different kind of uh, informations and, and functions that were able to respond to the, to the needs of this community. So this is Made of Lisboa, and in Made of Lisboa, we have, uh, you, the best way to explain what is made is, go, is invite you to go to the website and you just uh, navigate and, and, and travel throughout the different kind of things that exist in this, in this website. But one of the most interesting things is this, the map is the, more or less the same map, but with, we, in the map that I was showing you, we have like uh, 60 uh, points, and here we have like 500 points. So we need to organize and make it organized and make structured and make it uh, uh, intelligent for the user. So I'm going to make a zoom in one part of the city just to show you that we have here what we call spots. So we have incubators, accelerators, uh, co-working spaces um, and m some other uh, entities that are not companies. The second part is all the companies and startups that exist or and the, the third one is the people, people. So we have some rules. So who can enter in this in this in this in this uh, in this uh, platform, in this network? But it's not the city council or other other entity that choose and put the the players and the people or the companies in this directory and in this map. It's the people and the companies and the startups and the accelerators and the co-working spaces and the incubators that register themselves in this platform, okay? So let me just finish by making a zoom in this part where we are, which is uh, in the downtown of the city. So if you just go to the downtown, so you can go through the downtown of the city. We are in a very, we are here, almost here, so the this square, is really close to here, okay? And then if you just zoom in, you see that there is a, like a cluster of things. This is not the entire, uh, uh, th there is some filters, so we have more uh, I entities. Just the, companies. just the companies, yes. And the blue flag, it's an incubator. And if you look, it, it's Startup Lisboa. And you can see that there is a, a very diverse number of companies inside that spot that it's our own uh, incubator, Startup Lisboa. And then you can just go here and explore Startup Lisboa. But one of the most interesting things of this platform is that you can just go to Startup Lisboa and then connect it with Startup Lisboa, you have not just the people, the staff that manage Startup Lisboa, but you can just go through and navigate and see that there are some startups over here, okay? And some events that they, they put on the platform. And then you can just explore, okay, so I know more about Startup Lisboa, but how can I know more about, for example, another incubator? There are some, and you can just know and explore and get to know best, more, better the, the ecosystem through a digital platform. Uh, and this is just um, a flavor of uh, Made of Lisboa. But for the city council and for us, more than just a platform, an amazing brand that is Made of Lisboa, is using this as a platform to make projects and public policy around entrepreneurship and innovation. So for us, it will be really important, just to give you an idea, Probably, probably, we are going to have the brands of Lisbon as an entrepreneurial city in Web Summit will be made of Lisboa. That will be amazing, right? At least for us. <laughs> Second, if we want to connect the big companies with startups, how can you make a call or connect these two somehow separated worlds? 
through Made of Lisboa. If you want to bring universities and research centers and make projects, speed datings or specific projects connecting universities with startups, how can you improve this capability of make connections through this kind of a platform? If you want to attract and bring together investors and startups, how can you just make a call? If, as we are doing now, we are making MOUs with other cities, hubs of innovation and entrepreneurship. We start with Tel Aviv, London, and, um, and Amsterdam. So how you make a call so that you can have like startups and founders going through these ecosystems through Made of Lisboa? So it's not just a map, and it's not just a brand, and not just a platform. It's the, it's the ground upon which you can just develop and make public policy for innovation and entrepreneurship in a very uh, complementary way with different kind of stakeholders. So this is what for us is made of this world. Thank you. <laughs> Should I introduce the next speaker? Yeah. 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 Or I don't. Okay, so I think <laughs> Marika, please. You were here, so. Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm Hui. So I thought I was going to be invisible. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, so I'm here to help manage uh, these two days. I'll be the host. So I will be in, you know, just uh, generating a few questions and, you know, asking for your, for your contribution in the end of the talks. And Marike is going to talk right now, so I'll ask you to collect a few questions so that we can generate a debate in the end of the two presentations. So we're not going to make a break now. We are also not going to make the coffee break that it was expected because this morning uh, that we have a short time to, to discuss. So if you feel that you need to eat something or drink something, you can just really easily go, go there. And there's a window where you can just stand and drink and look at the room. So there's a small window. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, so just feel free to do that along the presentation and along the Q&A because we're not going to you know, stop for five minutes or ten minutes to do the coffee break in the morning. So I will have then more time to introduce myself properly, so I will ask you to, to start your presentation. Okay. Thank you. How much time am I have? Uh, you, you have uh, 15 minutes. 15? 15 to 20 because Paulo has okay. so okay. much. Okay, well, do, it's no, correct, no, no. it's correct. It's very challenging to spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I'm, uh, my name is Marika Macchi. I'm a research fellow to the University of Florence in the economic department. Uh, before I start, uh, I want to apologize for my very poor English. It's uh, uh, quite a challenge to speak uh, after Paolo. So please, uh, if uh, you don't uh, understand something, stop me and ask. Uh, well, uh, I'm very glad to be here. I learned a lot yet <laughs> from your presentation. Thank you. And uh, I'm not uh, working alone. Uh, I'm a part of a working group at the University of Florence. Uh, and uh, we are uh, both economists and uh, city scientists and planners. So it, it's, uh, it's quite a challenge to work together, but uh, I think uh, we can try to, to do that. Uh, my short presentation is constituted by uh, five parts. Uh, um, definition of our main goal, uh, the theoretical background, because we are academy, so we need to, <laughs> to do these kind of things. Uh, we try to ask ourselves, uh, what is a human platform? Uh, what are the parts who constitute this, uh, this kind of tool where uh, we need to uh, highlight so which kind of function uh, the the urban city need to perform, which kind of agent uh, we we have to consider in the city, uh, which kind of relationship and problem we need to solve in the urban area, and so the urban platform need to solve this kind of question. Uh, 
uh, we try to start, we are in a very early stage of our work in this kind of moment, uh, and uh, we try to, to start to map uh, the metropolitan city of Florence and uh, focus on function, agents, relationship, a problem. And at least uh, we try uh, to suggest to our uh, policymaker the hypothesis of uh, an urban platform useful for uh, their purpose. Well, uh, our research lab uh, start uh, to work before meet uh, uh, the municipality of Florence uh, that uh, I really want to thank to bring me here. And uh, of course, our main goal is to support strategic decision making uh, in innovation policy. Um, we are starting to ask ourselves uh, in which kind uh, the innovation ecosystem, the new entities of uh, the innovation ecosystem of the metropolitan area uh, of Florence uh, can uh, modify and are modified uh, by centers of urbanity. Uh, we, we see any everyday uh, changes in in our city, and not just in the infrastructure, but even in the use of um, the, the place. Uh, I think uh, uh, before Paolo said that we have uh, uh, in Lisboa um, changes some place from uh, old industries uh, to new place for creativity. Well, even in Florence, uh, this happens. And uh, how can uh, uh, put a new functionality in this uh, new urbanity for uh, uh, try to speed up a uh, uh, new, new entity in uh, the innovation ecosystem? Well, uh, we can see that uh, empirical literature, uh, there is a lot of uh, example for these uh, new innovative actors uh, and uh, the um, the common uh, between uh, all these empirical literature and example, uh, they have in common the idea they, they start inside the city. Uh, we are far from uh, the old policy on science park or technopole, <laughs> uh, like uh, something detached by the city. But we need to see new actor inside the city and uh, the, the needs they have. Uh, well, uh, we are not Silicon Valley, Tuscany is not a Silicon Valley, I think Italy is not Silicon Valley, but uh, I don't think this is uh, a bad thing, so, because uh, even Silicon Valley uh, have some trouble, and uh, there is a lot of literature about that uh, uh, recently, who highlight, uh, which highlight uh, the difficult to bring together this uh, boost of uh, uh, business side with the, the social development. So I don't think this uh, is a, uh, uh, fits for all like uh, as a good solution. Well, uh, to doing our job, so in the academy we need uh, some kind of references and uh, our main uh, and seminal book is uh, The New Science of City, uh, right by Michael Batti, he is a professor and, uh, at UCLA. And uh, the, the main points uh, Michael Batti highlights uh, are the city to consider the city as a, a set of networks, uh, different networks, uh, but uh, that which uh, emerge uh, themselves uh, with uh, bottom-up processes. Uh, he shift the importance uh, to mapping location, so not just a map uh, uh, of uh, the, the addresses, but uh, need to put uh, your interest uh, in the, the interaction between the agents and uh, the interactive process uh, who bring you in this kind of innovation ecosystem. Uh, every city uh, perform a power law, that means that uh, no matter how big you are uh, as a town, you need to perform the well-defined function. Mobility is a problem in uh, my born town, 130,000 uh, people, and mobility is a problem in Florence uh, with uh, 400,000 people. We have a different solution, of course, but the problem is the same. Uh, and so, uh, if uh, we look at city as a complex adaptive systems, uh, uh, we need to shift our uh, 
uh, focused from the optimization problem, uh, one solution for all, to a self-organization problem solving. So we need uh, probably uh, um, multi-competence uh, problem solvers and uh, uh, different um, answer uh, based on uh, who demand what. So, uh, in, in our vision, uh, urban system is uh, the place where competencies and skills, uh, new skills, uh, are uh, uh, agglomerate, are, uh, e it creates a cluster. Well, uh, we need to understand how the cluster of competencies and skills in the metropolitan area of Florence uh, are related to the global workspace now. Uh, as Lisbon, uh, even uh, Florence is a beautiful city and amazing for tourism, but we want to be something more than that because we have a density of uh, creativity, a density of skills and startup, but I think we don't have what we don't have is a real systemic vision, a real uh, systemic thinking in our actors in place. So uh, it's uh, quite uh, crucial for now to understand how create innovative ecosystem. Uh, the, the, I think system is uh, the part, uh, the very important part of our, of our thinking and uh, how we can create system through the platform. Platform is not just a map, as Paolo told before, but I think it is a very important tool to stimulate the interaction and the new proposal for our actors. So uh, we, we need to, to study the urban platform as an ontological space and define function, agents, relationship, and problems. And uh, well, I think uh, all of you have shown before this kind of uh, diagram because it is a smart cities, uh, European project, uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, governance, funding, sustainability, mobility, culture, entrepreneurship are our main function. And uh, we see that in this kind of, uh, of relation. The governance is all around the other cycle. The sustainability, not just uh, the environmental sustainability, but uh, also economic sustainability social sustainability and so on. Mobility is not just uh, moving people or cargo, but uh, also moving ideas, uh, try to understand how to connect the different hotspots. Well, uh, funding, uh, you know, uh, it's very important, of course, uh, but uh, it's not important it's for, for itself. It is important when uh, he tried to put together cultural entrepreneurship. So how can really create value added for our territory? Uh, culture is not, is not just uh, the research lab, it's not just the university, but uh, even event like uh, the Web Summit, I think uh, is very, very important to create culture, business culture, entrepreneurial culture, but even digital culture. Entrepreneurship, of course, uh, is a, uh, I think it is the most challenging uh, word in this, uh, in this diagram. And uh, in Italy, in general, it is not so easy to boost that. So uh, the, the main area of our interest, of course, is the red triangle you can see in the middle. Who to map? Well, uh, there is a, a lot of things uh, who move inside the circles, but we need to focus. Uh, we need to choose. Uh, and we need uh, uh, to understand how individual agents, uh, so uh, startup, uh, co working, uh, uh, SMEs, innovative, and so on, can be organized in formal partnership. So they become something else. And uh, we. We believe that the catalyzer agent is the most important agent to, to do in that. I think if I understood the, the former presentation that um, Made of Lisboa is just this kind of agent, a catalyzer for the forces you have on the territory, put in place in the territory, and the possibility to uh, become something else, to do some new project, uh, some uh, new partnership, uh, and so on. 
well, uh, how to map uh, relationships are important. Uh, we don't need just uh, the first layer. Uh, we need uh, to connect uh, the, the dot on the map, and we need to understand how they are related to each other, because uh, uh, not, it's not uh, uh, always uh, very clear, and uh, this uh, lack of, com of knowledge uh, often uh, if is a lock-in to create something new. Uh, well, uh, problems. Uh, problems uh, start uh, with our interaction uh, with our stakeholders, so the municipality of Florence in, uh, in this kind, but not just this. Uh, we have a lot of uh, challenge by literature review, uh, about uh, research project analysis uh, uh, in the university, but not just in, only in the university, and by interview with our other stakeholders, like working, like uh, uh, SMEs, and even with uh, large, uh, big uh, industry. How to translate this in the metropolitan city of Florence? Well, we try. Uh, we, we start to consider which kind of function uh, the metropolitan city of Florence need to perform. And uh, we are starting from uh, the very recent uh, um, law about the metropolitan city in Italy. I think the real law is uh, 2014. Uh, and. Uh, we highlight uh, some kind uh, of uh, the functions. But uh, I have to see uh, the metropolitan city is uh, in a very starting point now, and uh, is, uh, it's, quite, uh, uh, it's quite difficult to, to, uh, to, to burden uh, il, uh, the work of the, muni uh, the municipality just to this function. I, I think it is much more to come. Well, uh, we have a governance function like territorial statutory planning, like a systematic collection in statistical information. This is very important to uh, policy makers uh, and uh, to put in act uh, successful strategies. Uh, metropolitan uh, cities need to manage and realize uh, a large infrastructure and uh, of course public natural services uh, in uh, water sector, energy sectors and waste disposal. In the, in the metropolitan city you need uh, mobility, public utilities for metropolitan transport and uh, on the side of entrepreneurship you need to uh, develop uh, active labor market uh, strategies uh, and uh, to discipline uh, and planning the large distribution in the commercial in the commercial area. Uh, of course, in uh, in the culture function, we have uh, the necessity to create events, uh, not just uh, in the cultural heritage uh, as uh, in our tradition, but uh, even uh, I hope in the future, like uh, the Web Summit. Uh, and uh, we start uh, uh, to map the agents uh, uh, which uh, are involved in this kind of function, in, uh, uh, mainly uh, in the entrepreneurship uh, side. Well, we, we have individual agents. Um, uh, as you can show, I don't put in place just uh, the metropolitan city maps, uh, but there is a reason for that. Uh, and. Um, is not inside inside the border that, that uh, the the boundaries uh, that you can uh, show the innovation ecosystem uh, as uh, we we show after you can see spin off from the university of florence uh, go outside uh, the municipality of florence uh, and uh, start up uh, or spin off of the university of siena is a uh, near city come inside the uh, municipality of florence so we need uh, a broader view in this kind of moment in the in this uh, in this type of our research to understand uh, uh, where the map uh, is uh, most focused so uh, this is the spin-off uh, example. You can see this kind. This is uh, the metropolitan area of Florence, and you can see the the green dot is uh, from University of Siena, is a, another city, and they are located inside our metropolitan area. 
uh, we have uh, we need to map r and d laboratories uh, and uh, the national research council uh, laboratories on our uh, on our territory this is the they are uh, inside the metropolitan area uh, we need to map innovative SMEs and uh, global players and large firms. Uh, this is a, quite a challenge because uh, we have a different uh, database and different definition for each one of these. So we, we are working on that. And then we try to map uh, the catalyzer agents. Uh, we have uh, on, uh, on the municipality of Florence a different kind of uh, incubator. We have uh, a technopole and uh, we have uh, different kind of uh, incubators, not just the university incubator, but uh, even public incubators also. Uh, and we have the co-working hub and for us, uh, even the co-working is a, a, a possible catalyzer of uh, our skills and capacities. And there is uh, one, uh, the oldest of these uh, co-working is Multiverso, and uh, is not just one site in Florence, but uh, now is a network, uh, a franchising, I can see, and not just in Tuscany, but even in Milan. So it's a, a very, very uh, interesting uh, reality. And we need to map, but we need to understand how the research and design new need, uh, like the Fraunhofer Institute, if we want to <laughs> speak bigger, but uh, we have not the Fraunhofer Institute, of course, we have a different, um, little uh, reality and the public-private partnership. The relationship, well, we are uh, now working uh, on constructing relationship uh, database uh, from uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, for the corporate relationship, academic relationship, and spin-off from academia, uh, funding relationship, uh, uh, which uh, link Tuscany region and Flores municipality to the project, uh, institutional relationship like uh, Giant Lab with the UNIFI and different kind of actor, research project, network contract, and so on. And well, uh, then we needed to start uh, to pose some problems. Uh, um, and uh, the first uh, stakeholder come from the municipality of Florence is very, very challenging to work with uh, uh, Carlotta, Cecilia, Marta. They are uh, very, very serious and professional on that. And um, the first, uh, the first kind of problem, there are the resources for funding innovative agents, but they don't seem very interested in actual call for proposal. So we have money, but we don't know how this money can really be helpful for our startup, our uh, SMEs innovative, and so on. So what do new agents need, really? We don't know yet, uh, of course, because they don't uh, submit uh, to the call of, for proposal. And uh, we start uh, uh, in-depth analysis ad hoc for that uh, with the interview. We started in summer and uh, we will finish uh, at the end of the fall uh, of in this year. And the second problem, uh, well, okay, we map all of this kind of agent. We map all of this kind of relation, but uh, what can we do? with that. We need uh, to be most attractive to the investment, to the outside stakeholder and business unit. We n now we, we need to promote our skill. We have a density of skill and competencies, but we don't know how to promote the system between these agents. We don't know how to promote our territory outside the border. Well, uh, we need to, a tool to recognize and promote our competencies, and uh, we need, uh, in the meantime, to boost our innovation ecosystem. We need more than a showcase in this case. Uh, we, we don't need a showroom for our, uh, for our firm or for our startup, but we need uh, to stimulate uh, the debate uh, between them. Well, uh, even in this case, we, we started in that analysis, of course, uh, and uh, we try to, to propose uh, a, platform design, a platform hypothesis uh, of the platform design. 
what we need to your bank platform. Well, uh, the platform need to be open. Of course, on the surface, it is open to everyone, and that only the subscriber, uh, which uh, n doesn't not mean a subscriber with money, uh, of course, but uh, something who put himself uh, in the map. Uh, we need a platform uh, which is modular, so functional area can be expanded or resized based on uh, the necessity of uh, our stakeholder. Self-organized, so individual agents can post problems, directly request help from other, other, other agents, uh, and the presence of forums, and so with uh, other tools. We need a platform. In our vision, uh, which need to be coordinated, we need a someone uh, who inspired the platform, someone uh, who make the, this platform active uh, uh, during the time. Uh, we need, uh, I think, uh, an intelligence unit to be able to uh, inspire and uh, uh, challenge our actors in, in the map uh, to doing project, to doing uh, um, initiative, to doing partnership, and so on. And of course, uh, uh, this intelligent unit need to be a continuous relationship with uh, the main stakeholder, the municipality of Florence. This is very important for us. Of course, we need uh, to consider even uh, the cybersecurity issue, but this is uh, a most technical issue. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I can't speak about that. <laughs> well, uh, this is uh, our view of uh, the platform. We have uh, data flow from agents, so they can directly put uh, data, uh, sensor and control, et cetera, et cetera, inside the, the gateway. We have a modular gateway based on the function we showed before, uh, and we have a, port, a unique portal from all these uh, modular gateways. Well, uh, the portal, in our imagination, uh, speak with the dashboard, and uh, this is uh, a main list tools for the techno scientific committee. I'm sorry, it's in Italian. Uh, it's uh, my typo. And uh, this committee need to relate with the agents uh, through newsletter reporting, uh, uh, with the creation of events, uh, with uh, awards, uh, uh, with uh, a lot of tools to stimulate continuously this agent to cooperate uh, and collaborate. And uh, uh, like I said before, uh, the city policies or the city policy maker, the city management need to be constant in, uh, in communication with a committee, a scientific, technical scientific committee to understand which kind of need uh, agents are and which kind of necessity even city policy needs. Well, I think I stay not in 15 minutes, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I want to thank you. Uh, I hope it's clear. I have just a little bit communication, can I? <laughs> okay. Uh, in uh, December, the 14th and uh, 15th of December in Florence, we have um, the final conference of our uh, strategic research initiative. Uh, it's a joint cooperation between the University of Florence, University of Groningen, Grand Sasso Science Institute, Polytechnic of Milan. And uh, I think it could be of interest for uh, some, some one of you. Uh, and uh, if you want, there is uh, even a possibility to submit an abstract uh, uh, until the end of September. And of course, if you can, if you want to to come, you are very welcome. Well, uh, other information on that, uh, I think Carlotta can uh, can send you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we changed our minds. So there's still one hour and ten minutes until lunchtime. So maybe we go to the coffee break, otherwise we'll, we'll be a bit shy just, you know, by taking our, ourselves out of the chairs and going there and then coming back. So interrupting, I think it's better to make a 10-minute break. 
coffee break and then we'll be back in 10 minutes okay i hope you have a lot of questions because we're going to talk for the for the for the rest of the morning